What are heterosporous plants? Heterosporous plants produce two types of spores microspores and megaspores which develop into the male gametophyte and female gametophyte, respectively. In 1580 the physician Prospero Alpini, 1553-1616, identified that plants exist in male and female forms. What purpose do the gills of mushrooms serve? Gills, which can be present on the undersurface of a mushroom's cap, serve two main purposes. The first is to maximize the surface area on which spores are produced. Allowing a very large number of spores to be produced. The second purpose is to help hold up the cap of the mushroom. Spores are produced in the basidia specialized cells that line the surface of the gills. It has been estimated that a mushroom with a cap that is 3 in 7.5 cm in diameter can produce as many as 40 million spores per hour. How many kinds of mushrooms are edible? Among the basidiomycetes, there are approximately 200 varieties of edible mushrooms and about 70 species of poisonous ones. Some edible mushrooms are cultivated commercially, more than 844 million pounds. 382,832 metric tons are produced in the United States each year. What is the alternation of generations in plants? All plants exhibit an alternation of generations between diploid sporophytes and haploid gametophytes. Sporophytes produce haploid spores as a result of meiosis. The spores grow into multicellular, haploid individuals known as gametophytes. Spores are the first cells of the gametophyte generation. Gametophytes produce gametes as a result of mitosis. Male and female gametes fuse to form a zygote, which grows into a sporophyte. The zygote is the first cell of the following sporophyte generation. How was it discovered that microorganisms are effective against bacterial infections? British microbiologist Alexander Fleming, 1881-1955 Happened upon the discovery of penicillin's use as an antibacterial agent. In 1928 Fleming was researching Staphylococci at St. Mary's Hospital in London. As part of his investigation, he had spread Staphylococci on several petri dishes before going on vacation. Upon his return he noticed a green-yellow mold contaminating one of the petri dishes. The Staphylococci had failed to grow near the mold. He identified the mold as being of the species Penicillium notatum. 
Further investigation proved that staphylococci and other gram-positive organisms are killed by P. notatum. It was not until the 1940s that Howard Florey, 1898-1968, and Ernst Boris Chain, 1906-1979, rediscovered the benefits of penicillin and were able to isolate it for medical use. In 1945 Fleming, Florey and Chain shared the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for their work on penicillin. What is unusual about Amanita mushrooms? Some of the most poisonous mushrooms belong to the genus Amanita. Toxic species of this genus have been known by the names Death Angel, Amanita phalloides, and Destroying Angel, Amanita virosa. Ingestion of a single cap of either of these species can kill a healthy, adult human. Even ingesting a tiny bit of amatoxin the toxin present in species of this genus may result in liver ailments that will last the rest of a person's life. What is the difference between white rot fungi and brown rot fungi? White rot fungi, found in the wood of deciduous trees, first attack the lignin of wood. Once the lignin is digested, the fungi destroy cellulose and other major parts of cells. The partially decayed wood with residual cellulose is off-white in color. Hence the name white rot fungi. Brown rot fungi, found in conifers. Damage the cellulose first but do very little, if any, damage to the lignin. The name brown rot fungi came about because infected wood becomes dark reddish brown to golden in color. Which bryophytes are most closely related to green algae? Hornworts are more closely related to green algae than to any other group of plants. Hornwort cells usually have a single, large chloroplast with a pyrenoid. Granular, starch-containing body, similar to those of green algae. Mosses and liverworts are like all other plants because they have many dish-shaped chloroplasts per cell. Which plants most commonly form ectomycorrhizal relationships? The most common plants associated with ectomycorrhiza are trees and shrubs growing in temperate regions. These trees include pines, firs, oaks, beeches, and willows. These plants tend to be more resistant to extreme temperatures, drought, and other harsh environmental conditions. Some ectomycorrhizal fungi may provide protection from acidic precipitation. What feature of liverworts hints to their name?
liverworts were named during the Middle Ages. When herbalists followed the theoretical approach known as the doctrine of signatures. The core philosophy of this perspective was that if a plant part resembled a part of the human body, it would be useful in treating ailments of that organ or part. The thallus of thalloid liverworts resembles a lobed liver. Therefore, in line with the philosophy presented by the doctrine, the plant was used to treat liver ailments. The word liver was combined with word, which means herb, to form the name liverwort. What feature of liverworts hints to their name? Liverworts were named during the Middle Ages. When herbalists followed the theoretical approach known as the doctrine of signatures. The core philosophy of this perspective was that if a plant part resembled a part of the human body. It would be useful in treating ailments of that organ or part. The thallus of thalloid liverworts resembles a lobed liver. Therefore, in line with the philosophy presented by the doctrine, the plant was used to treat liver ailments. The word liver was combined with word, which means herb, to form the name liver word. What value do liver words have ecologically? Liverworts provide food for animals. Due to their ability to retain moisture. They also assist in the decay of logs and aid in the disintegration of rocks into soil. What value do liverworts have ecologically? Liverworts provide food for animals. Due to their ability to retain moisture. They also assist in the decay of logs and aid in the disintegration of rocks into soil. What plants are erroneously called mosses? Not all plants called mosses are bryophytes. Irish moss, Chandrus crispus, and related species are actually red algae. Iceland moss, Cetraria islandica, and reindeer moss, Cladonia rangifarina, are lichens. Club mosses, genus Lycopodium, are seedless, vascular plants, and Spanish moss. Tillandsia usneoides is a flowering plant in the pineapple family. What plants are erroneously called mosses? Not all plants called mosses are bryophytes. Irish moss, Chandrus crispus, and related species are actually red algae. Iceland moss, Cetraria islandica, and reindeer moss, Cladonia rangifarina, are lichens. 
club mosses, genus Lycopodium, are seedless, vascular plants, and Spanish moss. Tillandsia usneoides is a flowering plant in the pineapple family. Why are mosses important? Some mosses are decomposers that break down the substrata and release nutrients for the use of more complex plants. Mosses play an important role in controlling soil erosion. They perform this function by providing ground cover and absorbing water. Mosses are also indicators of air pollution. Under conditions of poor air quality. Few mosses will exist. Peat is used as fuel to heat homes and generate electricity. Bryophytes are among the first organisms to invade areas that have been destroyed by a fire or volcanic eruption. Why are mosses important? Some mosses are decomposers that break down the substrata and release nutrients for the use of more complex plants. Mosses play an important role in controlling soil erosion. They perform this function by providing ground cover and absorbing water. Mosses are also indicators of air pollution. Under conditions of poor air quality. Few mosses will exist. Peat is used as fuel to heat homes and generate electricity. Bryophytes are among the first organisms to invade areas that have been destroyed by a fire or volcanic eruption. What is unusual about cave moss? Cave moss, Schistostega pennata, is a small plant with reflective, subspherical cells at 166 its tips. These cells give off an eerie glow that is gold and green in color. In Japan the plant has been the subject of numerous books, television shows, newspaper and magazine articles, and even an opera. There is a national monument to this species near the coast of Hokkaido, where it grows near a small cave. What is unusual about cave moss? Cave moss Schistostega pennata, is a small plant with reflective, subspherical cells at 166 its tips. These cells give off an eerie glow that is gold and green in color. In Japan the plant has been the subject of numerous books, television shows, newspaper and magazine articles, and even an opera. There is a national monument to this species near the coast of Hokkaido, where it grows near a small cave. How can bryophytes be used as bioindicators?
bioindicators are physiological, chemical, or behavioral changes that occur in organisms as a result of changes in the environment. Bryophytes of the genus Hypnum are particularly sensitive to pollutants, especially sulfur dioxide. As a result, most bryophytes are not found in cities and industrial areas. Mosses and liverworts, especially Hypnum cupressiform and Homolaticium sericeum, were used as bioindicators to monitor radioactive fallout from the Chernobyl reactor accident in 1986. How can bryophytes be used as bioindicators? Bioindicators are physiological, chemical, or behavioral changes that occur in organisms as a result of changes in the environment. Bryophytes of the genus Hypnum are particularly sensitive to pollutants, especially sulfur dioxide. As a result, most bryophytes are not found in cities and industrial areas. Mosses and liverworts, especially Hypnum cupressiform and Homolaticium sericeum, were used as bioindicators to monitor radioactive fallout from the Chernobyl reactor accident in 1986. What are the uses of peat moss? Peat moss, genus Sphagnum, grows mostly in bogs. Peat moss is favored by gardeners for its ability to increase the water holding capacity of soils. Due to large, dead cells in the leaf like parts, it is able to absorb five times as much water as cotton plants. Peat moss is also used as damp cushions by florists to keep other plants and flowers damp. Species of sphagnum also have medicinal purposes. Certain aboriginal people use peat moss as disinfectants and, due to its absorbency, as diapers. Peat moss is acidic and is an ideal dressing for wounds. During World War I the British used more than one million wound dressings made of peat moss. Native North Americans used species of the Generineum and Bryum to treat burns. In Europe species of the genus Dichronoesia have been used to waterproof roofs. What are the uses of peat moss? Peat moss, genus Sphagnum, grows mostly in bogs. Peat moss is favored by gardeners for its ability to increase the water holding capacity of soils. Due to large, dead cells in the leaf like parts, it is able to absorb five times as much water as cotton plants. Peat moss is also used as damp cushions by florists to keep other plants and flowers damp. Species of sphagnum also have medicinal purposes. Certain aboriginal people use peat moss as disinfectants and, due to its absorbency, as diapers. Peat moss is acidic and is an ideal dressing for wounds. During World War I the British used more than one million wound dressings made of peat moss. 
Native North Americans use species of the genera Neum and Bryum to treat burns. In Europe species of the genus Dicronoesia have been used to waterproof roofs. What were the first vascular plants? The word vascular comes from the Latin word vasculum, meaning vessel or duct. It is believed that the first vascular plants were members of the division Rhenophyta, which flourished about 400 million years ago but are now extinct. Members of the extinct genus Cooksonia, named for the paleobotanist Isabel Cookson. 1893 to 1973, were the first vascular plants to be identified. These plants were only a few centimeters tall. With water conducting cells present in their stems but without roots and leaves. What were the first vascular plants? The word vascular comes from the Latin word vasculum, meaning vessel or duct. It is believed that the first vascular plants were members of the division Rhenophyta. Which flourished about 400 million years ago but are now extinct. Members of the extinct genus Cooksonia, named for the paleobotanist Isabel Cookson. 1893 to 1973, were the first vascular plants to be identified. These plants were only a few centimeters tall. With water conducting cells present in their stems but without roots and leaves. What are the four groups of seedless, vascular plants? The seedless, vascular plants include ferns of the genus Terephyta, which is the largest group, the whisk ferns of the genus Xylophyta, the club mosses of the genus Lycophyta, and the horsetails of the genus Arthrophyta. What are the four groups of seedless, vascular plants? The seedless, vascular plants include, ferns of the genus Terephyta, which is the largest group, the whisk ferns of the genus Xylophyta, the club mosses of the genus Lycophyta, and the horsetails of the genus Arthrophyta. What are the main features of vascular plants? Vascular plants have leaves, roots, cuticles, stomata, specialized stems. Tissues that conduct efficiently, and, in most cases, seeds. Their sporophytes are large, dominant, and nutritionally independent. What are the main features of vascular plants?
Vascular plants have leaves, roots, cuticles, stomata, specialized stems. Tissues that conduct efficiently, and, in most cases, seeds. Their sporophytes are large, dominant, and nutritionally independent. What is the relationship between ancient plants and coal formation? Coal, formed from ancient plant material, is organic. Most of the coal mine today was formed from prehistoric remains of primitive land plants. Particularly those of the Carboniferous period, which occurred approximately 300 million years ago. Five main groups of plants contributed to the formation of coal. The first three groups were all seedless, vascular plants, ferns, club mosses, and horsetails. The last two groups were the now extinct seed ferns and the primitive gymnosperms. Forests of these plant groups were in low-lying, swampy areas that periodically flooded. When these plants died, they decomposed. But as they were covered by water, they did not decompose completely. Over a period of time the decomposed plant material accumulated and consolidated. Layers of sediment formed over the plant material during each flood cycle. Heat and pressure built up in these accumulated layers and converted the plant material to coal. The various types of coal, lignite, bituminous, and anthracite, were formed as a result of the different temperatures and pressures to which the layers were exposed. What is the relationship between ancient plants and coal formation? Coal, formed from ancient plant material, is organic. Most of the coal mine today was formed from prehistoric remains of primitive land plants. Particularly those of the Carboniferous period, which occurred approximately 300 million years ago. Five main groups of plants contributed to the formation of coal. The first three groups were all seedless, vascular plants, ferns, club mosses, and horsetails. The last two groups were the now extinct seed ferns and the primitive gymnosperms. Forests of these plant groups were in low-lying, swampy areas that periodically flooded. When these plants died, they decomposed. But as they were covered by water, they did not decompose completely. Over a period of time the decomposed plant material accumulated and consolidated. Layers of sediment formed over the plant material during each flood cycle. Heat and pressure built up in these accumulated layers and converted the plant material to coal. The various types of coal, lignite, bituminous, and anthracite, were formed as a result of the different temperatures and pressures to which the layers were exposed. In the life cycles of seedless, vascular plants such as ferns, is the sporophyte or gametophyte dominant?
the seedless, vascular plants exhibit an alternation of generations consisting of heteromorphic diploid and haploid phases, as found in all plants. The life cycle of seedless, vascular plants is dominated by the sporophyte. The sporophyte is the plant for example. Trees and flowers that everyone visualizes when they think of plants. In the life cycles of seedless, vascular plants such as ferns, is the sporophyte or gametophyte dominant? The seedless, vascular plants exhibit an alternation of generations consisting of heteromorphic diploid and haploid phases, as found in all plants. The life cycle of seedless, vascular plants is dominated by the sporophyte. The sporophyte is the plant for example. Trees and flowers that everyone visualizes when they think of plants. How are plants identified based on their growth patterns? Herbaceous or non-woody plants die at the end of each growing season. Woody plants add a new layer of wood each year. What is the relationship between ancient plants and coal formation? Coal, formed from ancient plant material, is organic. Most of the coal mine today was formed from prehistoric remains of primitive land plants. Particularly those of the Carboniferous period, which occurred approximately 300 million years ago. Five main groups of plants contributed to the formation of coal. The first three groups were all seedless, vascular plants, ferns, club mosses, and horsetails. The last two groups were the now extinct seed ferns and the primitive gymnosperms. Forests of these plant groups were in low-lying, swampy areas that periodically flooded. When these plants died, they decomposed. But as they were covered by water, they did not decompose completely. Over a period of time the decomposed plant material accumulated and consolidated. Layers of sediment formed over the plant material during each flood cycle. Heat and pressure built up in these accumulated layers and converted the plant material to coal. The various types of coal, lignite, bituminous, and anthracite, were formed as a result of the different temperatures and pressures to which the layers were exposed. What do truffles look like? Truffles have a rather unappealing appearance they are somewhat round, but irregularly shaped. And have thick, rough, wrinkled skin that varies from off-white to almost black in color. The fruiting bodies present on truffles are fragrant, fleshy structures that usually grow to about the size of a golf ball. They range from white, gray, or brown to nearly black in color. 
There are nearly 70 known varieties of truffles, but the most desirable is the black truffle also. Known as black diamond that grows in France's Perigord and Corsi regions as well as Italy's Umbria region. The flesh of the black diamond appears to be black. But it is actually dark brown, and contains white striations. The flesh has an aroma that is extremely pungent. The second most popular is the white truffle, actually off-white or beige, of Italy's Piedmont region. Both the aroma and flavor of this truffle are earthy and garlicky. Fresh truffles are available from late fall to midwinter. And can be stored in the refrigerator for up to three days. What is unusual about the natural distribution of lichens? Lichens are widespread because they are able to live and grow in some of the harshest environments on Earth. They occur from arid desert regions to the Arctic, they grow on bare soil. Tree trunks, rocks, fence posts, and alpine peaks all over the world. Some lichens are so tiny that they are almost invisible to the naked eye. Others, like reindeer mosses, may cover acres of land with ankle-deep growth. One species of the genus Verrucaria grows underwater as a submerged marine lichen. Lichens are often the first inhabitants of newly exposed rocky areas. In Antarctica there are more than 350 species of lichens but only two species of plants. What is unusual about cave moss? Cave moss, Schistostega pennata, is a small plant with reflective, subspherical cells at 166 its tips. These cells give off an eerie glow that is gold and green in color. In Japan the plant has been the subject of numerous books, television shows, newspaper and magazine articles, and even an opera. There is a national monument to this species near the coast of Hokkaido, where it grows near a small cave. How do fungi cause trees to become hollow? Trees with hollow interiors are a familiar sight in parks, forests, and throughout urban areas. Fungal decay is often the cause of the hollowing of the trees. Wood decaying fungi can enter a tree following a wound to the tree. The tree will produce a band of cells that tries to resist the formation of decay directly around the wound. The fungus that has entered the tree through the wood will continue to decay the inner lichens. Like the yellow lichen shown here, are often used as natural dyes and in the perfume and cosmetic industries. Wood while the wood protected by the band of cells will continue to be sound. Hollow trees are also formed by fungi that solely attack the hardwood of a tree, this is most commonly observed in older. Coniferous trees of the Pacific coast of North America, reaching from California to Alaska. Heart rot fungi can enter a tree either through a wound or through small branch stubs. 
it decays the inner wood, resulting in a weak tree that is susceptible to damage by strong winds. What are the uses of peat moss? Peat moss, genus Sphagnum, grows mostly in bogs. Peat moss is favored by gardeners for its ability to increase the water holding capacity of soils. Due to large, dead cells in the leaf like parts, it is able to absorb five times as much water as cotton plants. Peat moss is also used as damp cushions by florists to keep other plants and flowers damp. Species of sphagnum also have medicinal purposes. Certain aboriginal people use peat moss as disinfectants and, due to its absorbency, as diapers. Peat moss is acidic and is an ideal dressing for wounds. During World War I the British used more than one million wound dressings made of peat moss. Native North Americans used species of the Generineum and Bryum to treat burns. In Europe species of the genus Dicronoesia have been used to waterproof roofs. What toxic substances are produced by mushrooms? The most toxic substances produced by mushrooms are amatoxins and phallotoxins, both cyclopeptides. These toxins act by interfering with RNA and DNA transcription, inhibiting the formation of new cells. The toxins collect in the liver, ultimately leading to liver failure. Who is considered the father of lich analogy? Eric A. C. H. A. Reus, 1757 to 1819 is considered the father of lich enology he was the founder of modern lichen taxonomy having described and arranged lichens into 40 distinct genera his four major works of research lichenographum swayx prodramus 1798 Methodus Lichinum, 1803, Lichenographia Universalis, 1810. And Synopsis Methodica Lichinum, 1814, formed the foundations of modern lichenology. What is Gray's Manual? Gray's Manual of Botany, first published in 1848 by Asa Gray, 1810-1888, under the title Manual of the Botany of Northern United States, was the first accurate and modern guide to the plants of eastern North America. The publication contained keys and thorough descriptions of plants. The eighth, and centennial, Edition was largely rewritten and expanded by Merritt Lyndon Fernald. 1873 to 1950, and published in 1950. This edition was corrected and updated by R. C. Rollins and reprinted in 1987 by Dioscorides Press.
What are the four major groups of plants? Plants are divided into phyla based on whether they are vascular. Containing vascular tissue consisting of cells joined into tubes that transport water and nutrients, or non-vascular. The phyla of vascular plants are then further divided into seedless plants and those that contain seeds. Plants with seeds are divided into flowering and non-flowering groups. Non-vascular plants have traditionally been called bryophytes. Because bryophytes lack a system for conducting water and nutrients. They are restricted in size and live in moist areas close to the ground. Examples of bryophytes are mosses, liverworts, and hornworts. Examples of seedless, vascular plants are ferns, horsetails, and club mosses. The conifers, which are cone-bearing, are seed-bearing, non-flowering vascular plants. The majority of plants are seed-bearing, flowering, vascular plants known as angiosperms. Which species of tree are highly resistant to fungal decay and which are highly susceptible? In general, black locust, walnut, white oak, cedar, and black cherry trees are highly resistant to fungal decay. Species that are highly susceptible to fungal decay include 156 aspen, willow, silver maple, and American beech trees. What are truffles and where do they come from? Truffles, a delight of gourmets, are arguably the most prized edible fungi. Found mainly in Western Europe. They grow near the roots of trees, particularly oak, but also chestnut, hazel, and beech in open woodlands. Unlike typical mushrooms, truffles develop 3 to 12 in 7.6 to 30.5 centimeters underground, making them difficult to find. Truffle hunters use dogs and pigs that have been specially trained to find the flavorful morsels. Both animals have a keen sense of smell and are attracted to the strong, nut-like aroma of truffles. In fact, trained pigs are able to pick up the scent of a truffle from 20 feet 6.1 meters away. After catching a whiff of a truffle scent, the animals rush to the origin of the aroma and quickly root out the precious prize. Once the truffle is found, the truffle hunter, referred to in French as a trufficulteur, carefully scrapes back the earth to reveal the fungus. Truffles should not be touched by human skin, as doing so can cause the fungus to rot. What plants are erroneously called mosses? Not all plants called mosses are bryophytes. Irish moss, Chandrus crispus, and related species are actually red algae. Iceland moss, Cetraria islandica, and reindeer moss, 
Cladonia rangifarina, are lichens. Club mosses, genus Lycopodium, are seedless, vascular plants, and Spanish moss. Tillandsia usneoides, is a flowering plant in the pineapple family. What are the main features of vascular plants? Vascular plants have leaves, roots, cuticles, stomata, specialized stems. Tissues that conduct efficiently, and, in most cases, seeds. Their sporophytes are large, dominant, and nutritionally independent. What mushroom has been identified as a fossil? Mushrooms are rarely found in fossil records since there is little in the structure of a mushroom that can be fossilized. In 1992 researchers in the Dominican Republic discovered a fossil of a fleshy, gilled mushroom. The mushroom, Copernites dominicana, is believed to be 35 million to 40 million years old and is the only known fossil mushroom from the tropics. Microscopic examination suggests it is related to modern-day inky cap mushrooms. Who is known as the founder of botany? The ancient Greek scientist Theophrastus, C.A. 372 CA 287 BCE, is known as the father of botany. His two works on botany. On the history of plants and on the causes of plants, were so comprehensive that one. 800 years passed before any new significant botanical information that had not been covered by Theophrastus was discovered. He integrated the practice of agriculture into botany and established theories regarding plant growth and the analysis of plant structure. He related plants to their natural environment and identified, classified, and described 550 different plants. What are the ideal conditions for fungi to attack wood? Fungi tend to attack woods when temperatures range between 50 degrees and 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 degrees and 32 degrees Celsius. Wood needs to be moist for fungi to grow. The most serious decay occurs when the moisture content of the wood is approximately 30%. Wood with a moisture content of less than 20% will usually not decay. And any infection will not progress. Wood that is too wet will not decay because the excess moisture does not allow fungi sufficient access to air thus impeding their growth. What were the first vascular plants? The word vascular comes from the Latin word vasculum, 
meaning vessel or duct. It is believed that the first vascular plants were members of the division Rhenophyta, which flourished about 400 million years ago but are now extinct. Members of the extinct genus Cooksonia, named for the paleobotanist Isabel Cookson. 1893 to 1973, were the first vascular plants to be identified. These plants were only a few centimeters tall. With water conducting cells present in their stems but without roots and leaves. Can mushrooms grow up overnight? A mushroom is only the fruiting body that is, reproductive structure of a much larger fungus body that grows unseen in rotting logs, rich humus, and dark, damp places. Many familiar mushrooms have fruiting bodies that are fleshy and umbrella shaped. Warm, damp weather triggers their sudden appearance. Usually first to be noticed are small, round button caps composed of densely packed hyphae. Soon after the outer covering ruptures, the stem elongates, and the cap enlarges to its full size. This entire process can indeed happen overnight. In the life cycles of seedless, vascular plants such as ferns, is the sporophyte or gametophyte dominant? The seedless, vascular plants exhibit an alternation of generations consisting of heteromorphic diploid and haploid phases, as found in all plants. The life cycle of seedless, vascular plants is dominated by the sporophyte. The sporophyte is the plant for example. Trees and flowers that everyone visualizes when they think of plants. What are lichens? Lichens are organisms that grow on rocks, tree branches, and bare ground. They are composed of two different entities living together in a symbiotic relationship. 1. A population of either algal or cyanobacterial cells that are single or filamentous. And 2. Fungi. Lichens do not have roots, stems, flowers, or leaves. The fungal component of a lichen is called the mycobiont, from the Greek terms mykes, which means fungus, and bios, meaning life, and the photosynthetic component is called the photobiont. From the Greek terms photo, meaning light, and bios, meaning life. The scientific name given to the lichen is the name of the fungus and is most often an ascomycete. As the fungus has no chlorophyll, it cannot manufacture its own food, but it can absorb food from algae. Lichens and algae enjoy a symbiotic relationship. Lichens can often be found growing around and on top of algae. Providing the algae with protection from the sun, thus decreasing the loss of moisture. 
Fungi and algae were the first organisms recognized as having a symbiotic relationship. A unique feature of this relationship is that it is so perfectly developed and balanced that the two organisms behave as a single organism. What value do liverworts have ecologically? Liverworts provide food for animals. Due to their ability to retain moisture, they also assist in the decay of logs and aid in the disintegration of rocks into soil. What feature of liverworts hints to their name? Liverworts were named during the Middle Ages. When herbalists followed the theoretical approach known as the doctrine of signatures. The core philosophy of this perspective was that if a plant part resembled a part of the human body, it would be useful in treating ailments of that organ or part. The thallus of thalloid liverworts resembles a lobed liver. Therefore, in line with the philosophy presented by the doctrine, the plant was used to treat liver ailments. The word liver was combined with word, which means herb, to form the name liverwort. What contributions did John and William Bartram make to botany? John Bartram, 1699-1777, was the first American-born botanist. He and his son, William Bartram, 1739-1823, traveled throughout the American colonies observing the flora and fauna of the colonies. Although John Bartram never published his observations, he was considered the authority on American plants. In 1791 his son William 160 published his notes on American plants and animals as Bartram's travels. Which woods are recommended for construction when the wood will be constantly exposed to moisture? Decay-resistant woods such as redwood and cedar or wood treated with preservatives are recommended for use in construction when the wood will be exposed to moisture. The most effective and least toxic preservative is chromated copper arsenate, CCA. Lumber treated with CCA has a characteristic light green stain. What is unusual about the stinkhorn fungus Dictyophora? The stinkhorn fungus Dictyophora indusiata is one of the world's fastest growing organisms. It pushes out of the ground at a rate of about 0.2 in, 0.5 centimeters, per minute. The growth rate is so fast that a crackling sound can be heard as the tissues of the fungus swell and stretch. During growth, a delicate, net-like veil forms around the fungus. 
giving this fungus its common name, the Lady of the Veil. The fungus then decomposes and in the process produces a strong odor that is similar to the smell of decaying flesh. This odor attracts flies that crawl over the fungus and collect its spores on their feet. This process ensures that the spores are carried to new areas. Although the odor produced by species of Dictyophora is quite unpleasant. Members of this genus are considered delicacies in China, where they are marketed as aphrodisiacs. How can bryophytes be used as bioindicators? Bioindicators are physiological, chemical, or behavioral changes that occur in organisms as a result of changes in the environment. Bryophytes of the genus Hypnum are particularly sensitive to pollutants, especially sulfur dioxide. As a result, most bryophytes are not found in cities and industrial areas. Mosses and liverworts, especially Hypnum cupressiform and Homolaticium sericeum, were used as bioindicators to monitor radioactive fallout from the Chernobyl reactor accident in 1986. What antidote is available for mushroom poisoning? No effective antidote for mushroom poisoning in humans has been discovered. The 138 toxins produced by mushrooms accumulate in the liver and lead to irreversible liver damage. Unfortunately, there may be no indication of poisoning for several hours after ingesting a toxic mushroom. When the symptoms do present, they often resemble typical food poisoning. Liver failure becomes apparent 3 to 6 days after ingesting a poisonous mushroom. Oftentimes a liver transplant may be the only possible form of treatment. Have fungi been effective in biocontrol? Biocontrol is defined as the use of one living organism to kill or control another organism. Fungi that parasitize insects are a valuable weapon for biocontrol. The spores of a parasitic fungus are sprayed on pest insects. The fungus then attacks and controls its host. A fungus was identified as killing populations of silkworms in as early as 1834. The spores of the same fungus are now used as a mycoinsecticide a parasitic fungus used to kill insects to control Colorado potato beetles. The spores of other fungi are used to control spittle bugs. Leaf hoppers, citrus rust mites, and other insect pests. How are truffles used in cooking? Dark truffles are generally used to flavor foods such as omelets, polentas, risottos, and sauces. White truffles are usually served raw, they are often grated over foods such 
as pasta or dishes containing cheese, as their flavors are complementary. They are also added at the last minute to cook dishes. What is dry rot? Dry rot is a misleading common name for this form of decay since one of the primary requirements for fungal decay is moisture. This form of decay is referred to as dry rot because it is found in wood that is not visibly moist or damp. The fungus Serpula lacrimans produces specialized mycelia that enable it to carry water and nutrients. From a location with the conditions necessary for decay to locations where these conditions are not met. Mycelia can carry water and nutrients up to 15 feet 4.5 meters, across materials such as stone and concrete. The environmental requirements for the fungus are humid air with a relative humidity greater than 95% and temperatures between 32 degrees and 82 degrees Fahrenheit, 0 degrees and 28 degrees Celsius. Serpula lacrimans is common in wooden buildings of Europe, Asia, Australia, and Japan. It is uncommon in North America although a related fungus. Marulaporia incrassate, causes similar damage that is not as extensive. Do different fungi rot different parts of trees? Most fungi that rot wood in standing trees are basidiomycetes. The group that includes mushrooms, fleshy shelves, and rigid brackets. Most wood rotters attack only one or two related species of trees. Conifers and deciduous trees are more prone to fungi damage. Many wood rot fungi damage only specific parts of a tree. For example, Ganoderma lucidum and Heterobasidian anosum specifically. Rot roots and are rarely found in higher sections of trees. Sirena unicolor and Climacodon septentrionale are common. In high sections of trees and are rarely found in the roots. Latiporus sulfurus and Fomatopsis pinicola are found in all sections of a tree except the smallest branches of their host. What are the four groups of seedless, vascular plants? The seedless, vascular plants include, ferns of the genus Terephyta, which is the largest group, the whisk ferns of the genus Xylophyta, the club mosses of the genus Lycophyta, and the horsetails of the genus Arthrophyta. How is a fairy ring formed? Long ago it was believed that the circles of mushrooms that sometimes form in meadows marked the locations where fairies gathered at night to dance. Fairy rings, or fungus rings, are frequently found in grassy areas. There are three types of rings, those that do not affect their surrounding vegetation. 
those that cause increased vegetational growth, and those that damage their surrounding environment. The rings are started from a mycelium, the underground, food-absorbing part of a fungus. The fungus growths are circular because a round inner band of decaying mycelium forms underground. This band uses up the resources present in the soil that is directly above it. When the fungus forms caps that present above ground. The mushrooms grow around the mycelium, creating a ring effect. Each succeeding generation grows further from the center. Why are mosses important? Some mosses are decomposers that break down the substrata and release nutrients for the use of more complex plants. Mosses play an important role in controlling soil erosion. They perform this function by providing ground cover and absorbing water. Mosses are also indicators of air pollution. Under conditions of poor air quality. Few mosses will exist. Peat is used as fuel to heat homes and generate electricity. Bryophytes are among the first organisms to invade areas that have been destroyed by a fire or volcanic eruption. How does light affect the growth of fern gametophytes? Light controls spore germination in ferns. Wavelengths in the red range of the spectrum, about 700 nanometers, induce spore germination. While wavelengths in the blue light of the spectrum, about 400 nanometers, prevent spore germination. Red light also induces apical growth and positive phototroism. Increases the gap phase in mitosis, and delays the formation of cell plates during cytokinesis. On the other hand, blue light inhibits these phenomena. How does light affect the growth of fern gametophytes? Light controls spore germination in ferns. Wavelengths in the red range of the spectrum, about 700 nanometers, induce spore germination. While wavelengths in the blue light of the spectrum, about 400 nanometers, prevent spore germination. Red light also induces apical growth and positive phototroism. Increases the gap phase in mitosis, and delays the formation of cell plates during cytokinesis. On the other hand, blue light inhibits these phenomena. What is special about the spores of leptosporangiate ferns? Leptosporangiate ferns are the most common ferns in North America. The sporangia of leptosporangiate ferns arise from a single surface cell. Are relatively small and have a delicate stalk and a thin sporangial wall. The small number of spores per leptosporangium is a multiple of four. 
varying between 16 and 512, most often 16 or 32, in Homosporous species. Each plant is able to produce millions of spores because of the large number of sporangia per sarus and the enormous number of sari per leaf. One mature plant of the species Thlypterus dentate can produce more than 50 million spores each season. What is special about the spores of Leptosporangiate ferns? Leptosporangiate ferns are the most common ferns in North America. The sporangia of Leptosporangiate ferns arise from a single surface cell. Are relatively small and have a delicate stalk and a thin sporangial wall. The small number of spores per leptosporangium is a multiple of 4. Varying between 16 and 512, most often 16 or 32, in homosporous species. Each plant is able to produce millions of spores because of the large Number of sporangia per sarus and the enormous number of sari per leaf. One mature plant of the species Thlypterus dentate can produce more than 50 million spores each season. What is a fiddlehead? The type of fern typically grown as a house plant is of the diploid, or sporophyte, generation. It is composed of a rhizome, an underground stem that occurs horizontally, which produces roots and leaves called fronds. As each young frond first emerges from the ground, it is tightly coiled and resembles the top of a violin, hence the name fiddlehead. What is a fiddlehead? The type of fern typically grown as a house plant is of the diploid, or sporophyte, generation. It is composed of a rhizome, an underground stem that occurs horizontally, which produces roots and leaves called fronds. As each young frond first emerges from the ground, it is tightly coiled and resembles the top of a violin, hence the name fiddlehead. Why are horsetails called scouring rushes? The epidermal tissue of horsetails contains abrasive particles of silica. Scouring rushes were used by Native Americans to polish bows and arrows. Early North American settlers, who cleaned their pots and pans along stream banks. Used horsetails found in abundance in such areas to scrub out their dishes. Why are horsetails called scouring rushes? The epidermal tissue of horsetails contains abrasive particles of silica. Scouring rushes were used by Native Americans to polish bows and arrows. 
early North American settlers, who cleaned their pots and pans along stream banks. Used horse tails found in abundance in such areas to scrub out their dishes. What club moss is called the resurrection plant? Selaginella lepidophila, found in the deserts of the southwestern United States and 170 Mexico. Is called the resurrection plant because of its ability to defy severe drought conditions. During periods of drought, this plant forms a tight, dried up ball. When rain comes, its branches expand, become green, and carry out photosynthesis. What club moss is called the resurrection plant? Selaginella lepidophila, found in the deserts of the southwestern United States and 170 Mexico. Is called the resurrection plant because of its ability to defy severe drought conditions. During periods of drought, this plant forms a tight, dried up ball. When rain comes, its branches expand, become green, and carry out photosynthesis. <laughs>